Several years ago, I remember my dad sharing about his days fighting in the Korean War. He had just finished basic training and was immediately shipped overseas. He arrived with his division at Incheon, Korea, and it wasn't very long before they were moved up on the front lines. He had a friend in basic training who was his foxhole buddy. A foxhole buddy is the guy you dig a foxhole with and stay together throughout the battle. The foxhole would provide some protection against enemy fire, but you also had someone right there with you in the heat of battle. The reason is that you needed someone to provide support when you had weak knees and wanted to run. They would fight with you, help you if you were injured, and help you think clearly in the heat of battle. They would offer you protection and perhaps save your life. However, after my dad and his foxhole buddy dug their hole, they came under enemy fire. A mortar round landed close to their foxhole. Immediately, my dad remembered what he was told in basic training. If a mortar round lands near your foxhole, you have to get out as fast as you can and find another place of protection. If you do not, the North Koreans will adjust the next mortar round and hit your foxhole. My dad did what foxhole buddies are supposed to do. He reminded his friend of their training. When you are in a war and experiencing enemy fire, you have to make split-second decisions. As every trained soldier and law enforcement officer knows, you have to rely on your training and one another. Both have to be second nature and decisions have to be instinctive. That split second decision may very well be a life or death decision for you and your fighting mate. And in this case, it was. My dad told his friend they had to move right now. In a split second, my dad got up and moved out of the foxhole and ran for cover. The next mortar round didn't miss its target. My dad's friend refused to move and didn't make it back home alive. The Bible tells us we are in a battle, a spiritual battle. Paul says in Ephesians 6 that it is a battle, not of flesh and blood, but of spiritual forces. It is very real and has serious consequences. It is why we're not only to rely on the person of the Lord Jesus in the midst of this battle, but also the people who follow the Lord Jesus, our brothers and sisters in the Lord. We need one another to accomplish the mission to go and make disciples of all nations. It is the mission we have been reminded of throughout the book of Acts in our series called Witness. Throughout our time in the book of Acts, We've seen how the Holy Spirit gave power to launch the church and enable the believers to be a witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. As we landed halfway into Acts 11, there were so many Gentiles coming to Christ in Antioch that the apostles in Jerusalem sent Barnabas to go and check things out. When Barnabas arrived, he was overwhelmed at the number of people coming to faith and needing to be discipled. He was the perfect man to put his arm around these early believers, offer encouragement, and disciple them. However, the needs were so overwhelming, he needed help. So what did he do? He went and found Saul in Tarsus. Saul had been there for six years, serving in relative obscurity until Barnabas came and found him. He was the perfect man for the job because he would come alongside Barnabas as an intellectual giant who had his life changed by the resurrected Jesus. And together, they would encourage and disciple these believers. As a matter of fact, they did such a great job serving together that after a whole year, they had developed a pretty robust discipleship program. So much so that these early followers of Christ in Antioch became known as Christians. It means they had, to, they had to hold to specific beliefs about the truth of Jesus Christ and not only spoke about him correctly, they lived it. They were identified as the party of Christ. Well, before I go, here's the question I want you to think about. Who's your foxhole buddy? We need each other to grow and to serve together in the body of Christ, the church. And since it is true we are in a spiritual battle, we need a foxhole buddy for encouragement, support, help when we fail, and to remind one another of the mission that Jesus gave to us. And when we serve together, we all exercise our unique gifts, just like Saul and Barnabas did, so we can be more effective in discipling others and advancing the mission Jesus gave us. I hope you can name someone or a group of people that you're able to say, they are my foxhole buddies, and they will be with me and serve with me in the heat of the battle of life.
If not, then find a small group of real Christians you can begin to meet with. Maybe you just need to ask someone you know to go to coffee and just get connected. Go to a men's or a women's event. And as we've told our kids for years, to have a friend, you have to be a friend. And more than anything, pray God will open doors so you can find someone or a group to join in the Christian walk. And wherever you are, join a Bible-believing and Bible-teaching local church and start serving. This is one of the greatest ways to begin to meet people. If you would like to watch this message from Acts 11, 19 through 30, you can go to our website at rockpoint.church. If we can help you in any way, please let us know and join us at our Lake Elmo campus for any of our services. All the times are listed on our website. Have a great week. Thank you.